Welcome to our daily devotional. I'm here in our garden and today I'm planting castor beans. Here's a castor bean, beautiful little seed. Here's what they look like. Here's a bunch of them. And I'm growing these castor beans because they are the most amazing plant that a gardener can ever grow. You will get more comments from castor bean plant than anything else that you can grow. So you plant this little seed, plant it in the ground, and up pops this seven foot tall plant with bronze foliage, 12 inch wide palm shaped leaves, and it has scarlet red, almost psychedelic red spiky seed pods. Anybody who sees that plant will say, wow, what is that? It's the most fun thing you can grow. Jesus talked a lot about gardening and seeds, as, as you know, and, and one of the things that he said in John, he says, verily, verily, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So the seed falls to the earth, it dies, it stops being a seed, and up pops that incredible, amazing castor bean plant. Very fruitful, tons of seed pods. Obvious in nature, in gardening. But Jesus wasn't talking about gardening. He was talking uh, about the kingdom of heaven. He's, and he, that same verse goes on and he says, anyone who loves their life will lose it and anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. If you hate your life, you'll keep it for eternal life. Kind of the opposite of how we, we see things. Death brings life. It's the opposite of what we're taught. And Jesus came to this world and he preached about the kingdom of heaven. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the kingdom of heaven invaded the earth and there was a collision between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of this world where everything is different in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, we love our enemies instead of hating them. We do good to those who persecute us. When someone hits us, we turn the other cheek. Instead of revenge when someone hurts us, we forgive them. And not just once. Jesus said 70 times 7, over and over, forgive them. The kingdom of heaven is a place where leaders don't rule over us and oppress us. They serve us. The first are last and the last are first in the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven, we consider others as more important than ourselves. And Jesus taught all of that. And then he punctuated it all by dying on the cross. But he didn't die for his friends. He died for his enemies. What kind of place is that? And there's no place where the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of this world collide as in teaching on self because we're taught that happiness and fulfillment come from focusing on myself and fulfilling my my dreams paying attention to my needs my wants my desires i have to fight for my rights i get ahead by pulling you down and into that world jesus came and preached in, in uh, luke he says Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will save it. Totally the opposite of the world. The cross was a Roman method of execution. So what Jesus was saying, he said that if we want to be his disciple, we deny ourselves we voluntarily, we laid our lives down, we die, and we follow him. That sounds hard, because self-denial? Who wants self-denial? We love self-indulgence. We don't want to die in the world. That's the worst thing that can happen. Jesus says die. And following somebody else? Well... I pretty much like to do my own thing. But Jesus said, the kingdom of, of heaven, things are opposite. That this little seed, pretty as it is, falls to the ground, it dies, and then up plant grows this beautiful plant full of fruitfulness and beauty. 
that out of death comes life. That we give up our small, meager lives and out comes this beautiful, fruitful life. And that's my story. 1977, I was a senior in college at, at Dartmouth College and uh, came back for spring semester. I had my plan set. I was uh, gonna go work for IBM for two years and then go off to Harvard Business School, already was accepted. Uh, I was all set and two years before, I had had this lightning bolt experience with God where I had a revelation of God and I knew him and I loved him. But it didn't change my life. I didn't, it didn't take, so to speak. So I came back to, to Dartmouth there and ready to have a great senior spring. I took a reduced, reduced course load so I could have more fun, in fact. And for some reason, I decided that I would ask a friend to take her to church with me. So she took me to this little church that was meeting on campus in the chapel, and I walked in, and there's people there. They're raising their hands. They're worshiping fervently. People would stand up and start sharing what God was teaching them and, and uh, what he was doing in their lives. And I was amazed, uh, and I was profoundly disturbed because I realized I believed the same thing that they believed, but it didn't make any difference in my life, whereas they were actually living it. And I figured that if I believed in God, that it ought to make a difference in the way I acted and the way I lived. So I kept coming back, and one day Dave Zeely corralled me after the, the meeting, and we got to talking, and I realized pretty quick that he didn't think I was a Christian, which offended at that so I told him I was offended and he says well are you a Christian I said, well of course I am well why he said well because I believe in Jesus well, what does that mean he asked well I believe that he he lived 2,000 years ago and he uh, went around preaching and teaching and doing miracles and and uh, he died on the cross and he was raised from the dead Dave looks at me and he says that's not what it means to believe the devil believes that he's not a Christian and he told me a story that changed my life it's about a man named Charles Blond and back in the 1850s and he was a tightrope walker and he would entertain people and one day he set up his tightrope at Niagara Falls and he was on the edge and uh, went to the crowd and he he calls out to them do you believe I can make it to the other side and of course they they shout oh yes we believe we believe go for it go no, no, no. Do you really believe that I can make it to the other side? Oh, yes, we believe. Go, go. And he grabbed the person next to them and he grabbed him by his lapels and he said, if you really believe that I can make it to the other side, you jump on my back. And at that point, I was cut to the heart because I realized I was just like that crowd. I was saying, yes, Jesus, I believe in you but I wasn't willing to jump on his back. And I knew I had to do it, so I did. And over the course of the next week, my life was utterly transformed and changed. My value system was turned upside down. Things that had been important to me were no longer important. Um, I was in love with, with Jesus like I never before. All I wanted to do was worship. It was as though that I walked from darkness into a beautiful day like this. And remember, I had a great life. I was happy. I wasn't sad or depressed or anything, but still the difference was so great. It was as though I went from darkness to light. I gave up my small, meager life for something that was so good and so wonderful, I could never have imagined it. Well, what about you? Have you ever jumped on Jesus back? Have you ever made that decision? I'm gonna die and follow him. It's not about self-denial by alone or trying to be good. It's about Jesus. We jump on his back and we follow him. We give our life to him and he gives us something immeasurably greater. Or you may be uh, a person that you, you made that decision years and years ago, but Jesus said, deny ourselves, take up our cross daily. 
it's a decision we, we make every day. We wake up in the morning, it's like, I'm gonna follow Jesus today. I'm gonna yield my life, not my will, but your will. And when we do that, he gives us something so much greater than we could ever imagine. It's as though this little seed goes in the ground again and now pops this beautiful thing. So join me in prayer today as we give our lives to Jesus. Father, thank you for sending us Jesus to model what it's like to die that life would come forth. Thank you, Lord. We want to do that afresh. Lord, we, we lay our lives down, Jesus. We jump on your back. We say we want you more than anything in this world. And thank you, Lord, that you give us so much more. Thank you. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me, and have fun piggyback riding today.